first of all, I think we, have, we are entering a period where numerically uh, the protest by Iranian workers has increased dramatically. We are entering a period where over the last few months those protests have taken um, unprecedented uh, extension and, and in, in, in itself death as well. What are these workers protesting? Many of them are protesting against non-payment of wages, some of which aggravated by the situation of sanctions, and I will come back to that. Many of them are uh, uh, protesting against privatization, about the fact that uh, uh, the companies they worked with have been privatized, then closed down. It's not just privatization, but total closure. And therefore, desperate economic uh, situation for the families of those workers. But in addition, I think uh, one has to understand that they are fighting at the same time against the Islamic regime, against its economic policies, for immediate economic demands, but also they are fighting against international capital, against world capitalism, not just in terms of war, but even in their economic struggles in a country that is following and is named the best example of IMF's um, new uh, economic agenda in the region. Obviously, the way they uh, uh, react to those policies is by going on strike, is by protesting, and those prote protests really reflect in their nature, in their very nature, their opposition to international capital, to world capitalism. Sanctions have hit the Iranian working class the hardest, in my opinion. Um, partly because they have forced them into this day-to-day -day economic struggle that in the long term weakens the working class. We are obviously in favor of workers' struggles, but we don't want desperation of workers, as we have seen in examples in the last few weeks in Iran, where on one particular demonstration outside one of the government offices, workers were shouting, isn't there anyone to help us? Is there no one hearing what we are saying? And that is a voice of desperation. And that desperation is partly because of the economic policies of the regime, some of which was, were mentioned by Behrouz, the rate of inflation, massive scale of unemployment, but some of it is also to do with firms making people unemployed directly as a result of sanctions. Whether it is a capitalist using the excuse to sacking people or whether it is really the direct, straightforward result of sanctions is irrelevant here. The reality is that for the Iranian worker, associated, say, with the Iran car industry, where many have been made unemployed because spare parts come, can't get into Iran, where uh, a worker in the petrochemical industry made unemployed because many of the contracts, including some that had been signed and finished with Japanese companies, with the, uh, Italian companies, and with Shell, have now been put aside because uh, these companies have come under pressure by the UN and the US for sanction busting. They pulled out of the contract. The result of it is that the Iranian worker who was supposed to get a job, who had a job in these uh, projects or was supposed to get a job, he moved to those projects, has been made redundant. So we are facing a massive uh, direct influence of what is happening regarding sanctions uh, for the Iranian working class. And Obviously, this is strengthening the regime, because any regime that is following a neoliberal economic agenda wants to find excuses for its terrible <coughs> policies against the working class, wants to have uh, excuses to uh, force repression and so on. Despite all this, and despite the fact that I did refer to many of the uh, protests of the Iranian workers being about day-to-day -day issues, despite the fact that some of these are in their nature uh, very economic in the immediate demands they present, there is a very serious political 
character to most of these protests as well. And the political character is the repression inevitably forces the workers to oppose such repression and there is struggle between the security forces and the working class. There are many workers who are arrested. Any attempt at organizing the workers uh, outside the framework of the totally uh, spy elements of the regime within the Islamic Shura is confronted uh, by uh, attacks by the regime. And therefore, uh, you can't divide the political and economic issues in the struggles of, any, of, a, of a working class against the dictatorship. There are attempts at creating nationwide organizations. One of the major uh, complaints of the workers themselves is that they have suffered from lack of nationwide organizations. And there are many attempts, at least two serious attempts, at creating uh, a nationwide coordinating committee of various political uh, strike committees, various workers' committees. Amongst those, as in the student movement, the debate rages about whether one can work openly or whether one should work secretly. There are arguments about whether syndicalism is the answer or uh, a more radical approach of organizing the working class in hidden strike committees, secret strike committees, is the answer. Many of these are issues that we, as sol in solidarity with the Iranian working class, cannot uh, intervene in, but we should be aware and realistic of those contradictions, those differences, and try and help the uh, uh, arguments if we have a particular uh, point of view on it. I think in Hopi, we have always all, all emphasized that we want to see the Iranian working class organized. But in order uh, to see the Iranian work, working class organized, one has to accept the fact that the threat of war is one of the most serious uh, ob uh, obstacles to any form of independent working class organization. It has worked into the hands of the Iranian regime for increasing <coughs> its repression of the working class. I would emphasize that the Iranian working class isn't just another case of solidarity. It's not just another case of international solidarity. This is the working class who, after all, 30 years ago, almost to the months, <coughs> managed one of the biggest, most important strikes of the 20th century. The oil strike and the strike of millions of ordinary employees, workers in Iran that overthrew the uh, island of stability of the United States, the Shah's Iran. This is the working class that in three decades of opposing the uh, Islamic regime has no illusions about political Islam. In many ways, it is the only working class in the region where irrespective of what Bedrus clearly, rightly described as its practical day-to-day -day attitude towards spiritual issues has no illusions about political Islam being able to answer its economic or its anti-imperialist aspirations. That is why for anyone on the left who is anti-war, for anyone who sees the struggle of the working class internationally as part of its fight, the support for the Iranian working class is on a different level than just another solidarity. Because of the region where it is situated, because of the recent history of its struggle, but also because it is, in my opinion, the only beacon of hope in that sea of political Islamic fundamentalism and Sharia, uh, uh, attitudes toward Sharia and political Islam. However, support for Iranian workers isn't uh, divorced from reality, is not divorced from political reality. We are facing a war in that region. Irrespective of what happens to Iran itself, the events in Iraq and Afghanistan influence the day-to-day -day lives of Iranian people and Iranian workers. But also the threat of war and sanctions have given it a more immediate nature. We cannot, as some people have written, and I think Torab alluded to this in the morning, uh, one cannot write that the struggles of the Iranian working class are 
irrelevant to the issue of war, that one can show solidarity with the Iranian working class, at the same time support bombing of Iran by Israel or anybody else. One cannot say that we are for the Iranian working class, but on the other hand, let's not complicate the issue by bringing imperialism or threat of war or sanctions into this. That is not what the activists of the labor movement in Iran are telling us. Over the last months or so, we are hearing echoes of what some of us have been saying for decades now, for a decade now. For at least six or seven years, some of us have been arguing that solidarity with Iranian workers that comes from dubious forces, from Solidarity Center, from CIA-affiliated organizations, for international NGOs which have associations with funds given by the United States, are damaging to the Iranian working class. I can only tell you that that was an underestimation of the level of feeling we are hearing now from workers inside Iran. Workers inside Iran are far angrier that people have jeopardized their strike, have jeopardized their political action by not taking a strong stance against Solidarity Center, against CIA-backed unions. And if we are to show that solidarity, if Hopi is to pursue the policy of solidarity with Iranian workers, we must be, make, we must be very clear that we will strengthen the positions we took 6th of March 2008. We should be much stronger in repelling any coordination, any activity, when Iranian workers are telling us we don't want that kind of solidarity. That's damaging our members. And for those reasons, I think that we do need to build a different kind of solidarity, one that isn't based on getting signatures. <laughs> Uh, comrades, there's uh, not much more to really say at the end, there's not much to say. Um, I think we've had pretty much a successful year in the unions. Every time we've gone to a union meeting, every time we've gone to a conference, we've always been successful, we've always had a good hearing. Uh, people have come up to us asking for leaflets, asking for more information. Uh, the most common complaint I get from ASLF in Manchester is, you're not using us enough. Why are you not sending us this information? Why are you not using our media enough? Um, what I would say is this, if you're in a union and you haven't put a motion forward, why? If you're in a political group and you haven't put a motion for affiliation, why? I mean, these are simple things that we can do. Um, last week, the Alliance for Green Socialism affiliated, a very small group, but it was a lot of work for the branching leads. Um, and I think we need to focus a lot more on um, building up local meetings, getting educationals going, um, doing a lot of store work out on the streets. I think it's a very simple motion. And again, it has to be, as Yasmin said, on our politics. It has to be um, for solidarity, also against any imperialist interventions. Um, please vote for this motion. Thanks. So if anybody who wants to speak against that motion? Or and on the Islamic Republic. Thank you.